welcome to my garden. So to, I, there has been a lot going on in the garden last week, as you can see. I kind of got this far. You, you uh, saw this um, arbor being installed. We installed this in our, in our last video that I showed you. Everything still needs to be tweaked and straightened. I mean, this is just a kind of a rough sketch of it, um, of what I kind of envisioned. And um, But I really like how it's coming out. Finally, I was able to go ahead and plant inside of this uh, page. Pavers. As you can see, I, I really like how it turned out. I decided to go with uh, a wintergreen um, uh, ground cover. It's, uh, the name is called Golfiera, if I'm saying it correctly. And this is a quite of um, um, it's it's an evergreen, which is beautiful, and uh, it. Uh, and it's quite hardy. Some of the websites were telling me that um, they can tolerate even zone three, and I'm not sure if that's true or not. But I, you know, it seemed like it's pretty, pretty tolerant, even it's cold tolerant, even for the. Um, some of the colder zones that you can plant but what I'm hoping to do is to go ahead and uh, have this evergreen just basically take over they will fill in everything they, they you know they uh, spread with their rhizomes they also they, they don't come up uh, too high so they will be about six inches high but they will spread quite a bit so I'm actually hoping for them to spread a little bit inside of the underneath the roses so they will tolerate um, uh, part, I think I'm not sure if they will tolerate a hot sun. This area of mine is definitely very, very sunny. Um, I'm hoping with uh, giving enough moisture, they will be fine. But you know, I just have to play with it and see. I know the other area is part sun, and they will be just fine because they're kind of you know they they like to grow in a forest under the trees. I think that's kind of where they their natural habitat come from. But um, uh, they do have beautiful you know white flowers. They flower just the small white flowers in the, in the summertime and then in the winter time they create these gorgeous berries and you can see they're quite big like some of them look at that size of this berry isn't that pretty and I thought they're so Christmassy and so beautiful and Christmas time is coming up too um, I thought this kind of would be a fun project for me to get uh, to get them all planted and I can you can see I planted some inside of these papers here as well and then today we will go ahead and um, plant all the uh, but we'll, we'll go ahead and plant all the um, our, these containers. So today we are going to fill these containers, which I'm really excited about. Uh, to about uh, about these containers, I think it will be really, really pretty, and I can't wait. I'm ready to get something something going on here. Um, you can see uh, I'm ho it's, these evergreens are looking good, but I, you know, I'm hoping for them to drew to droop down a little bit to drip down uh, this uh, paper just a little bit longer maybe like about here if they start filling um, it would kind of bring really pretty um uh, pretty scene here with this beautiful berries and I just wanted to go here this is today is a horrible horrible muddy day because we had so much rain which is really good but you can see here I have uh, planted up literally the entire it's just, it's the sun is glaring here I'm sorry but uh, you can see it's you know I planted all the way around some of these pavers here all the way around here and all the way there so here I have my uh, I installed this it's kind of you know it's okay we probably need to um, make it a little stronger but I have uh, staked, you know, stakes that are holding this down. So I planted um, Colette Rose, Colette Climbing Rose here, which I'm really excited to cover this. Uh, beautiful Colette. Also, I have David Austin Monstead Wood uh, Shrub Roses on each corner right here. So I think this area will be really pretty. And then I will divide this probably to keep it for the roses. And this area, I, you know, I will go ahead and um, probably... <sighs> I don't know, install maybe pavers or something like that to make a nice sitting place where it will, you know, all the rain will drain down. And up here, you can see George has already <laughs> got quite far with the pergola project too. I'm really excited about this. It's looking really, really good. This poor rose is so ready to go up uh, to be trained. So I have to get this at least. Uh, I think he has a few more things to do here for me. And then I will be ready to bring this one up. This is a Lady Banks rose. Beautiful, beautiful 
beautiful. It's spring, it's it flowers only once in the spring, but it brings such a beautiful show. Oh, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's not looking great right now, unfortunately, because it's falling down, but it will not be very long for me to train this up. So I'll just bring it maybe like this for now to hold like that for now, hopefully. But this is a very vigorous rose. It will go quick. The minute it goes up, it will just really spread quickly. So anyway, I'm really excited how this is all coming along. It becomes really nice, cozy sitting place here where I can sit with our friends, maybe a glass of wine in the evenings, have a you know aperitif or something like that, um, and just enjoy enjoy our time with friends. So so this is how it's coming along. Anyway, let's go um, and I'll show you. Oh, it's so muddy here. <laughs> Completely in the mud. Um, so these are the winter berries. So we had this uh, in actually little where, where I purchased them. Uh, I purchased them in a really good price. It was oh, about five euro. And what I did is I took this one and I divided them into three or four uh, sections. And that's how I uh, completely uh, completed this entire paper planting area. This one, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do here. Thinking to probably uh, bring one more of those containers here. I'm not exactly sure. So I'm kind of leaving that alone for the moment until I can, I'll decide what, what's going to play out on that side. So, but today what I wanted to do is plant those two containers and um, I am going to plant a few more of my Nellie Stevens holly. So in my previous videos, you saw that I started a Nellie Stevens holly hedge starting uh, at this fence. And I'm not removing any of these shrubs that are growing at the moment because I still want some privacy here until these guys will take over because these are evergreen they will go up about you know 20 to 25 feet and what i'm my thought process about this hall is, is eventually this pine trees probably will go because they're getting really really old as we can afford slowly we'll just have to remove them um, and this ones hopefully will take their spot for as a privacy hedge now um, Stevens, uh, Nellie Stevens holly. Uh, this is a self-pollinating holly, so you don't have to have a male holly around to self-pollinate. But if you want abundance of berries, which is beautiful, you should plant um, a male holly around. And so uh, my research said that, yes, you don't have to because it will still produce beautiful holly. But if you want abundance, you have to plant another male variety. So what I decided to do is go ahead and purchase two male holly. This is a blue prince holly. And you can see it has a beautiful purple new foliage when it starts shooting out on the stems. Very pretty, a dark green color. But for one male holly, it will pollinate about 10 female hollies. But you have to have uh, planted your male holly about within uh, 30 feet of radiance, what I understand. And so I think I'm going to plant two because I know I'm going to have more than 10. And so um, because I really want abundance of berries on my Steve, uh, Nellie Stevens holly, um, these ones go about uh, 10 to 14 feet high, maybe in about 8 to 15 and uh, 8 to 10 feet uh, spread. Um, these ones, though, um, you know, they can tolerate part shade, but they do become nice and full when they are in more sun, in the more sunnier areas. And so, um, and they are, they can be a bit pokey, so they can get, they have a bit of a sharp leaf, so you have to kind of watch out for those. But um, for me, I think I have to trade that with having gorgeous berries on them and have a nice evergreen hedge so I think I'll be okay with that just make sure to trim it and clean it well and it's going to be far so I'm not walking by it all the time to catch me you know or anything like that so um, they should be okay so that's what we are doing today and then I have one more thing that I'm going to plant that is another small um, Japanese maple this one is called um, I believe um, Atrop 
purpurium. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly, but we'll put the, post that on a uh, on a screen so you can see. Now this is a red variety, and it's a kind of a dwarf variety, which is nice. So this one probably will go about one meter to one and a half meter high. But the good thing about interesting uh, fact about about this Japanese maple is because. Um, it will stay red most of the summer. You know, as, if you're familiar with the Japanese maples, they change colors. Some of them, they come up red, and then they change their color during the springtime into um, more of a green tones, and then they change it again in the fall. But this one should stay within red tones throughout the summer. And it, it, I think it's going to be pretty. I'm trying to introduce a little bit of a more uh, red foliages, and reds and blues into my garden because it seems like I have lots of greens to break the, the green up a little bit and so that's going to go also into the ground today anyway we'll just go ahead and start planting I have some pansies here for our containers I have on uh, these evergreens and I can't tell you exactly uh, what this is let me see if I can see this one it doesn't say so it doesn't say what variety evergreen this is but it's really soft and beautiful so um then what i will do is i'm going to pl uh, plant some um rip then um, uh, wrinkle irises into those pots now these are uh, dwarf irises they're very pretty um, i haven't had one before but i kind of had my eye on for a while it's a new variety it has a um, um it's kind of it has double uh, beautiful kind of blooms, uh, kind of spiky, a little bit of a firework it look like. So we'll see how that goes. But I have, I, I saved this one from my uh, bulbs collection, and uh, so I'm going to throw some into the containers to come up in the spring. We'll go ahead and get this started. Okay, guys so containers are ready um, I think this is going to be really pre pretty as they start uh, filling in the container and the, um, the narcissus will come out I plant I planted five bulbs in each container for the narcissus and I think I'm planning on not changing these containers as I change other containers because I still like to have the evergreen um, or winter green to stay there to go along with everything else that I have going on here. I might just swap out this um, 
uh, pansies probably with some I don't know maybe begonia or something maybe small but for mo for most part I will I, th I think let, let them just be in this container and start filling in um, the uh, conivar dough probably will get big after a while I just have to swap it but it will take a while before they get to that point so I'll just let that because I really like how it looks it's really really pretty right now um, totally love it and I just wanted to say that I used my homemade compost um, when I was start started to pack in the roots I start I used my home homemade compost which is amazing so I usually use my home homemade compost uh, inside my containers a lot and I really I think my uh, the containers have looked so much better ever since I started using really good compost inside there because they really need lots of nutrients more so than in the so in the ground so that's that now let's just go ahead and plant this beautiful Japanese maple and then we'll continue on with our project I have my shovel covered in a mod I think I'm going to plant this Japanese maple right here because I think it will be really pretty as we, as I'm coming up. These are my hydra, uh, uh, hydrangeas, um, incredible hydrangeas. So I think if I come, we come up here, it will be a really beautiful ending of this line with the red Japanese maple to bring it because it's not going to get too, too big. It will make a really beautiful, I think, tree right here. And that way we will end this a line here so far I think that's what I'm gonna do and see how it works and then I have uh, planted uh, David Austin Rose here I think this one is Thomas Abaquette here which is going to bring beautiful dark um, mag magenta color so that's going to be really pretty and I can show you how I planted uh, uh, David Austin Rose's several actually this one we planted in a, set, a, a few videos before, and this is a Jubilee celebration right there. But I planted a Pat Aston, which I'm really excited because I found Pat Aston. And then these two are uh, Benjamin Britten. And then I have another one right there, uh, which is another one of the uh, mustard wood. These are deep, mustard wood has a beautiful deep colors, and Benjamin Britten has just gorgeous. Uh, kind of a dark raspberry colors I think it'll be really pretty and I also planted several roses in the back and I will keep planting more towards the other area but I think so far it's starting to do really well now this bucket is going to be buried into the ground because I am going to try to make a, a water feature here with this uh, fountain that we have so we'll see how that goes it's a whole another project but I'm working on that so that's why it's sitting there and then on this side, um, as you can see, I planted uh, Lady, the Lady of Shalat. Very excited. Everybody just talks um, about this rose. Um, they, they just has so many great reviews about it uh, online. So I'm really excited. It's going to be really big and will fill in here with a beautiful color. And you can see how big that rose bush is. I, br I bought them uh, bare root here in France. They ordered, uh, they shipped it to me and look at how established this rose bush is. I mean, I was so impressed with the rootstock root and uh, how many, how mature that rose bush is. So anyway, I have couple more that I have to still order for this season but I'll update you as I go The Japanese maples, I wanted to say really quick, they don't like a lot of hot sun. So if you have a woodland area where uh, they will be under kind of a more of a sheltered sheltered area underneath the big trees, kind of like here, um, they will do much better, especially in the warmer zones. I think sun is way too much for them. Uh, in the colder zones, I don't know because they usually don't grow well in the colder zones. If you have tried it and it works, let me know. But in my experience, 
here I am at zone B, uh, zone 8B, and the uh, hot can, uh, I'm sorry, sun can be really hot in the afternoon, and they just really burn under the hot sun. So I like to keep them under the trees. <laughs> Okay, for the Nellie Stevens holly, I decided to give a little more space than I gave on that side, but that side I don't have anything growing, so that would be okay. Um, these ones, I think I'm going to spread a little bit more because I have a beautiful uh, fairy magnolia that's growing here, which is also going to be evergreen. It's a, it's a pink variety. It will grow and it will have nice filter here. Um, just a beautiful tree, and I kind of like to have that here. It's okay. Um, and you know, if it's a little farther apart, that's not going to be a problem for me. You know, if it has a little bit of, um, you know, sun, dappled shade, you know, coming or sun coming through, uh, we'll see how it goes. But I might uh, give the other ones a little more distance uh, from each other. So this is all kind of experimenting process. We'll see how they goes. It goes because this, it will take them a while to. Um, to probably reach certain height anyways um, and then we'll just see how it goes and we'll just correct them Okay guys, so I am finished. I think I'm finished planting. Uh, we're getting really close in my hedge. I think I have maybe one sp space for one more. Uh, maybe not, because I have this um, beautiful um, eucalyptus. Sorry for the car. This is a beautiful eucalyptus here that is growing. I think that I may not need to plant anything in between because I also have another uh, uh, fairy magnolia pink that's growing right there. I think this probably be enough for this area to bring privacy for the for the garden. So. Um, this will conclude our video. I just need to go ahead and water everything really well. Uh, although our soil is, as you can see, I'm in a mud. It's been raining a lot um, and it's really wet, but we'll just give a good water and uh, I will let them grow and see how it all comes out. I'm excited how this area is coming along. It's just start little by little and you get this beautiful garden. So it's very exciting. Um, anyway, thank you so much uh, and have a wonderful week, wonderful day. I will see you in my next video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my videos. Um, and uh, thank you for helping me to create and work in the garden. Uh, thanks to all the subscribers. And have a great holiday season. Bye-bye.